Hi everyone, welcome to this video, which is the second part of the measurement lines. At first, I didn't plan to make this video, but when I was using this tool, I saw some issues, so I thought it could be interesting to make some corrections. Things are working pretty well like that, but we have some issues when we select one of those controllers. If I change the X value using the keyboard, we're gonna have the controller moving, but the lines are not refreshing. If I want to update this, I can just move the controllers in the viewport, or we could also just play the animation and everything goes back where it's supposed to be. This is not really convenient. Sometimes you would like to use the keyboard to enter exact values. The issue comes from the tracer, I guess. So I made this example, which is a basic version of what we did. So we have a null here, a second one here. When we move them, the tracer updates. When I hit Ctrl Z, Sometimes it's not updating correctly, and in the attributes, if I type a value in here, the tracer is not going to update. So to correct that, I replaced the tracers by IK splines. For those who don't know what IK splines are, it's a tool to rig character spines, for example, or the tail of an animal, things like that. Here I made a joint chain. So if we would like to animate that, we would use an IK spline. I'm just creating a new spline here. I select the first joint. In the rigging tag, I'm gonna select the IK spline. In the IK spline tag, I'm gonna drag and drop the end joint. And we need a spline, which is this one. And now the joints are gonna follow the spline. I'm gonna select the tag and I go to handles. This spline has three points, so we're gonna add three handles. In the object here, we don't have anything. If I hit create, it's gonna make a new null object, which you can see here. And we want one for each of the controllers. I'm gonna hit create twice. So now we have three null objects. I switch the shape to be circles. I'm gonna make them bigger. We can see that the circles are now positioned where we have points in the spline and this way we're going to be able to move the spline using the nulls. So this is how you use the IK spline and you're going to use this to control this line using two controllers. So I'm going to select my two first nulls, I'm going to control drag, I want those to be cubes and change their color using the same principle. We're going to set the second null to be a child of the first one. I select the first one, go to rigging tags, IK spline. In the IK spline, I'm going to tag, I import the second null. Now we need a new spline. I'm going to delete the tracer. We're going to add a new spline like this. We only want two points on this one. The first is going to be attached to the left and the second one to the right. In the spline object tab, we're going to set it to linear and we don't want no intermediate points. We're going to add it in the IK spline tag. We just want to add two controllers, one for the starting point, one for the ending point. And instead of using the create button, we already have them. It's the two green nulls here. So I'm going to just drag and drop them inside the tag. Those two are just there to create the IK spline. You can just hide them. And so now we are just left with the spline and the controllers that we had in the first place. So when I move them, now the spline is going to stick in between. In the attributes, when I now type some new values using the keyboard, the spline is going to update. And this way, we're going to get rid of the issue we had with the tracers. We're going to select everything. I'm going to copy back in the main file. I'm going to paste it. And what we're going to do here is replace the tracers. We're going to start with the tracer arrow. So I'm going to move my spline here the orange nulls and here we have the controllers so the tracer arrow is going to trace between the arrow start and arrow end so we're going to be looking for the arrow end and arrow start in the ik plane we're just going to replace the controllers this one is going to be arrow start and here we get arrow end we don't need those controllers anymore and we're going to delete the tracer as well here we have a spline wrap, and instead of using the tracer, we're going to be using the new spline. 
and we're going to call this one arrow spline. I'm going to hide it. We're going to do the same for the others. So I just paste it again. We're going to replace this tracer this time. This one is tracing from start to start height. Start and start height. I'm going to rename this one start spline. In the tag, I'm going to replace by start and start height. We're going to move this plane. Delete the tracer. We're going to delete the original controllers. And I'm going to move this now. Now we're going to replace the last tracer. So here, end and height. In the IK tag, I'm going to replace end and end height. Like so. This is going to be the end spline. I put it in the sweep. I delete the tracer and the controllers. I just move my null, and so now all the tracers have been replaced by IK splines. When I move the controllers, everything is still working, but now we're gonna be able to make keyboard inputs without having troubles. The last issue is on this controller. If I move it up and hit Ctrl Z, we're still gonna have a refreshing issue. This is because of the priorities. So to correct that, we're gonna select the IK spline tags. So in the basic tab, priority, we're gonna switch from expression to generators. And here we're gonna type minus one. If I now move my controller and hit control Z, the line is gonna update correctly. And even with keyboard inputs, it's gonna update. So about this uh, priority problems, we could still improve the setup. So here we have a little lag on the Boolean, for example. Priorities in C4D are sometimes strange, but it's working not too bad. So I'm gonna leave it like that. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video of this series. Bye.